All right, speed bump fans. Actually, I don't know if you're really fans, but anyways, uh, we're here to help you. So we just completed another uh, two-night trial run, trying to still square away some issues that we noticed on our first one. Um, so the biggest thing was the electricity. Yeah, the battery issue. So we got it squared away with obviously the Xantrex and um, the battery not communicating, which is typical for lithium and the Xantrex system. So you have to use the app, which I already covered in another one. Um, but uh, what we found is we, on the last trip as well as this one, if we ran anything, even hooked up to 30 amp service, that we would still have a battery depletion. And the basically the issue was the crummy electricity grid at the campground. Yeah, actually. So it looks like, I mean, a lot of times for the most part, it would be pulling maybe one to two amps at times. So that is actually why we had an issue with uh, running systems and still, you know, hooked up a 30 amp service and the battery drain. So what we did is when we got home, I grabbed that little uh, Pulsar generator, hooked it up for about 30 minutes. And in that time, it was pushing 80 some amps, uh, from what I could tell, into the system. And it charged us about 13% in a half hour. So I think it's about right. Um, so the generator actually was much better than the campground power. So at least we've got that sorted out. Because I think the rest of the systems, the AC, all the Truma things, we absolutely love. Now, we did decide to try the convection microwave. The yeah, convection yeah. oven. And a couple little issues there. Well, yeah. One, I set the smoke alarm off. So, and the other thing is? Is it gets really hot. The ceiling right above it was, was too hot to the touch, even. Yeah, so, and granted, I mean, we when we got back, we fired it up just to kind of, because I was trying to really peg the system to see, just hooked up the household electric if we'd still have the depletion in the battery. So I ran the convection, had the TV on, and uh, so we just fired it up to 425 and cooked a little pizza. But, but yeah, I mean, it definitely um, had that, that roof uh, right above it pretty hot. So that's something to keep in mind if you're really thinking of using the convection oven. Um, so what else do we figure out? Um, oh, so I touched on this. So, you know, I talked to Lithionics since I made my last video and we were trying to talk through some of these issues that I've been seeing and just trying to figure things out. And even then he had pointed out, uh, the great engineer that I've been working with that, uh, some campgrounds really don't have, even though it might be 30 amp service that they generally aren't pushing 30 amps, which we now know firsthand. Um, but he was saying, so we've got the go power, Go solar, go power, anyways, whatever they're called. Um, the two 190 watt panels, so we have 380 watts. And he said, basically just kind of rough mathing it. Um, and that's good English, I don't care what you say. Um, but uh, but no, he's, so he said basically on a good day, ideal conditions. So 320 watts is what the battery is capable of. But he said on a good day, roughly 120 amps, or not 100, uh, basically 120 watts. Uh, I'm totally screwed up amp hour, watt hours, whatever the hell it is. Um, but basically you can only push about ideal conditions a third of the capacity back into the battery off of the solar alone. So that just kind of gives people an idea because I think um, the systems, the Truma systems, we've absolutely loved. Um, the water heater works fantastic. Oh, uh, but speaking of water, if you're boondocking, you're, well, you're going to re realize that you're going to fill up your gray tank faster than you thought you would. Well, it's only if you care about bathing. <laughs> I mean, so what, two days or two nights? So it four showers between the two of us. Yeah, the gray tank was pretty full. So I had to uh, pop it and let out some of it uh, last night before we uh, pet or, you know, basically uh, disconnected and headed, or headed, bleh, headed home today. I got cotton mouth. Um but yes, yeah, so we've got that. Uh, oh, and then we have some some other things that we've run across that, well, Mrs. Speedbump is going to hit on these because one she fixed and the other one she discovered. So we will hit on that here momentarily. All right, Mrs. Speedbump, what did you discover prepping the trailer? Well, as I was walking out the door, I noticed the trim here is no longer attached to the wall and there's a pretty sizable gap there. Yeah. 
And then we looked over the stove and just pushed and realized it is no longer firmly attached back here as well. Yeah, so what I'm thinking is the uh, the backsplash is about an eighth to a sixteenth of an inch, uh, just too long. So I think trimming this and resealing it will rectify that issue. And then another thing that we happened to dis uh, discover before uh, we actually ever took it out is, if you'll notice... There's just a little bit of a gap here in the wall where somebody could look in. And I want my privacy, so I got out the handy-dandy sewing machine, made a quick little curtain attachment and that way I have my privacy so yeah we don't want to be giving any uh, creepers the opportunity to be peeping in on us so and then she loves her crappy stuff so as you can see she has gone to town on her cricket and unfortunately because we have already stripped down the uh, the trailer to go back to storage we do not have all of our other little decor to make it so homey as we are away from home but you can see that next time so, yep, a little over a week and a half, we'll be back up in Wisconsin, so we'll be at Road America, truly boondocking for four nights, bringing a portable poop remover, just in case we have to offload some uh, gray or black tanks, uh, but we do have shower facilities uh, available to us, so that helps. But uh, we will still keep you up to date. Hopefully now, you know, we have a better understanding of the battery capabilities. Uh, we'll definitely be bringing the generator. So I'm thinking probably if we have to run the air, uh, we'll hook up the generator during the day, let it run, recharge, and then uh, have some comfortable nights. So, But hopefully the temperature is far more manageable than 80 degrees. So we'll see. But, uh, oh, what else do we have? Uh, so we also added one other thing to the trailer, uh, the fantastic fan. Oh, absolutely. And it pulls the air through here amazingly. Yeah, so a 12-volt fan versus, uh, you know, the um, AC, I mean, the trim is still really efficient, but I mean, last night it actually got a little chilly in here, um, even with the windows closed because of some weather. And we do have a shroud over it to uh, be able to run it in the rain, but um, definitely another option uh, if you're trying to avoid using the AC as much as possible. So, I mean, you feel the wind, so it's a good option. So we'll keep you informed. You guys stay safe and we'll catch you later. Thanks. So what you're seeing here is a 7% amp draw on the system versus basically what is two amps coming, less than two amps actually coming in from the campground service. So that is a big explanation as to why we had such a huge depletion on our battery. Well, not huge, but uh, why we were still getting a depletion on the battery while hooked up a 30 amp service. And then here you'll see, this is actually from hooking up a little Pulsar 1800 peak watt generator. You know, we're pushing a heck of a lot more uh, amperage and wattage back into the battery and within 30 minutes or so. Uh, like I said, I think we recharged it probably 13% or so. Um, so in, honest, in all honesty, I mean, here you can see, you know, we're pushing, you know, what I think over 10 amps into uh, the system versus the negligible amount that we were getting from the campground service. So huge difference. Um, so what we initially thought was an issue really wasn't. Thank you very much.